Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we got a twofer. We got the Vermin Lord Corruptor that we're going to talk about today. And why is it a twofer? It is popular both in Skaven and in Nurgle right now. So I thought it was going to be good to do a little rundown on this guy so that we can see uh, what the popularity is right now and how you might be able to more effectively use him in your lists. So first of all, just a quick look at the model. Super cool. I love the Vermin Lords. They are absolutely fantastic models. Um, not really a lot to say there. Um, I had a lot of fun painting mine. Did a little bit of green stuff work on him as well to uh, give him some nurgly exploding guts. But um, that is neither here nor there for the topic at the moment other than the simple rule of cool that this guy is awesome. So his basic stats, um, his movement is on the damage table, uh, starts at 12 inches, degrades pretty quickly. Um, he's got 12 wounds, and he can get his movement all the way down to 4 inches from 12, so that is a pretty big deal there. He begins very mobile and drops off significantly. 4-up save and 10 bravery. He is a Nurgle demon in addition to being um, part of Skaven Clan Pestilence. Um, as with all of the Vermin Lord War Scrolls, he has his prehensile tail attacks, four attacks on the damage table, threes, threes, rend one, one damage. And then his melee weapon is the Plague Reaper. Um, that is also on the damage table, but does not degrade quite as badly as other things do. Uh, he starts out at 10 attacks on 3s and 3s, rend 1, 1 damage. But we're going to see um, now that he actually gets a lot better than just that, because that, that key there, that 10 attacks, is huge. So, his Plague Reapers, whenever he gets an unmodified hit roll of 6, it inflicts a mortal wound, and the attack sequence ends. Um, he has the Plague Master ability. At the end of the combat phase, you roll a die for each enemy unit within 1 inch of the model. On a 4-up, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Uh, protection of the Horned Rat, he's got a 5-up ward save. Terrifying, you subtract one from the bravery characteristic of enemy units while they're within three inches of any models with this ability. So that is also very important if he's going after a, a hero. This will make heroic recovery more difficult for that hero. He is a wizard and has the Dreaded Plague spell. He can also cast two spells per turn. Dreaded Plague, casting value of seven. When it's successfully cast, you pick one enemy unit within 13 inches of the caster and roll one die for each model in that unit. For every four up, the unit suffers one mortal wound. That is a ton of damage when this guy gets off. And his command ability, the Lord of Pestilence, uh, you use this command ability in the combat phase. Uh, if you do so, you prick one friendly model with this command ability, that is this guy. In that phase, you can reroll hit rolls for friendly clan pestilence while they're wholly within 13 inches of this model. That, of course, is including himself, uh, which is the most important part there. So, um, overall, he's a really good hero monster, and he's also a wizard, which makes him great for battle tactics. Uh, 12 wounds on a 4-up save with a 5-up ward is pretty durable. He's definitely going to have some staying power. Um, his command ability, it targets the Corruptor, so you can't also use all-out attack or all-out defense uh, in the same phase. But noteworthy here is that it also is going to buff Plague Monks and other passive uh, bubble buffs that Nurgle might be giving out, uh, you also can absorb with the Vermin Lord Corruptor. Now, 
particularly important in Skaven, he doesn't get access to any of the spell lores. You do get access to spell lore in Nurgle, but Flaming Weapon is probably still going to be your best option in both cases for the universal spell lore. You put that on his Plague Reaper, and suddenly that 10 attacks, 3s, 3s, rend 1, 1 damage goes to 2 damage, and straight up doubles his damage output. If you add together his command ability to reroll hits with Flaming Weapon, he does about 8 damage per turn versus a 4-up save, um, and that goes up to about 10 damage if he also uses his Finest Hour. Um, that Dreaded Plague is an absolutely amazing spell. I We really can't underestimate how powerful that is. It does have a casting value of 7, which is difficult to achieve, but you're plus one to cast when you're near gnaw holes, which is definitely very important. And also important to note that when you're playing him in Nurgle, if your opponent is playing Skaven, you can use enemy gnaw holes to get that plus one to cast. So that is still a viable option for you, even uh, when playing Nurgle. So overall, this guy is great. He's pretty tanky he can have a pretty strong amount of damage output and currently he's at 285 points which is an absolute steal for the amount of utility that this guy can bring to the table now his command ability is only really going to be buffing other plague monks um or other clan pestilence but let's be honest it's just plague monks that you're really talking about here um that is definitely a downside that it's so limited in its use. It doesn't have a broader effect on your army, whether you're playing in Skaven or in Nurgle with this guy. Um, really, he's going to be more of a solo operator casting that flaming weapon and getting in there and doing as much damage as possible. Um and just being that hero monster that is going to, you know, score those extra points on battle tactics and be durable enough to prevent your opponent from killing him. Bravery 10 makes him a really great candidate for heroic recovery. Um, he's going to be doing that like 90% of the time ish. Um, so it, he's really. Overall, I think a fantastic choice, both for Skaven and for Nurgle. In particular, I think he's a really strong piece for Nurgle. He has some really great artifacts that he can take because he's a demon. Um, and in addition, being a demon in Nurgle also gives him the benefits from Unicent Wanderers, which uh, helps him ignore the first point of Rend in melee. It can help him benefit from one last gift. It can give him the Muck Talon artifact, which uh, gives him plus one to hit against heroes, so he can kind of become a hero killer. Um, definitely just a lot of nice little benefits that he can take. Um, also can take the Wither Stave for an artifact, uh, forcing your opponent to reroll sixes to hit within 12 inches of him, which is really powerful. Um, if he is near your general, uh, one last gift makes your opponent um, take a mortal wound for every one to hit that they roll. Um, so in I think particularly in Nurgle, this guy is really strong. He certainly does have use in Skaven as well, but I think Nurgle is really the home where this guy wants to be hanging out. Um, he's a piece that I have not really played with much in Nurgle myself. He's been showing up in a lot of competitive lists, though. Um, recently just went 4-1 at uh, GT in the UK, um, with him as pretty much the main hammer in the army. So I'm definitely curious to try this out. I'm probably going to try this out in a list tonight uh, for some games, and I can certainly report back on how it all went. But that is all for now, guys, on the Vermin Lord Corruptor. 
As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications, come support us on Patreon, and join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. That is it for now, guys. I'll talk to you all later.